welcome to another edition of the Horror Chambers DVD and Blu-ray Collection. I'm Anthony T. This is a special edition because it's kind of a companion piece to my CT Horror Fest coverage that I provided in the next edition of Anthony T's Horror Show, which should be dropping very soon. I'm just finishing production, just have to get everything worked out. I'm hoping to have that up by the end of this week. But in the meantime, here is some of the films that I picked up at CT Horror Fest. I hope you enjoy this episode. And without further ado, here is the CT Horror Fest edition of the Horror Chambers DVD and Blu-ray collection. The first titles in uh, in this CT Horror Fest edition of the Horror Chamber DVD and Blu-ray collection is Body Melt and Blood Theater. These are two of Vinegar Syndrome's most recent films that they've released onto Blu-ray. Now, the Blood Theater Blu-ray right over here also has a bonus film on it called The Visitant. I can't wait to check these films out on that. And another one that just recently got released is Body Melt. As you can see, I kind of like turned the thing over to its original cover because... I'm one of those people that love original theatrical art as prefer as opposed to newly created art for a lot of these releases. But this is a classic Australian horror film, which I can't wait to check out. From what I've seen in the trailer, it looks very interesting. Let's just put it that way. The next three films that I also picked up are uh, Prey, Christmas Evil, and Mad Men. First, Prey is a film that I kind of am interested in seeing. I saw, I think, a clip or a trailer of it. I can't remember which on the Vinegar Syndrome YouTube channel that made me... Want to pick it up? Plus, this does look interesting from its plot synopsis. So, that really drummed up my interest in this film. The next film is Christmas Evil. I've been hearing a, a lot about that film. It's one of those classic cult holiday films. You can find it on Shudder. You can find it pretty much anywhere on DVD, Blu-ray, or I think I may have seen it on Amazon Prime at one point, but I've always wanted to see that. I'm, I've seen Silent Night, Deadly Night, and, looks, and this film does look like it's demented. In the final film, Mad Men, is a film that I always wanted to get. But never had the chance. As you can see, it has cool cover art. Plus, it's an 80s slasher film. So, it's definitely going to get my interest. And this film also features Galen Ross, who will be at Rock and Shock October 12th through the 14th. So, that was another incentive of picking this film up now, then later. Because. I'm going to need to get myself hyped up for Rock and Shock. So, this will be on the Rock and Shock list to watch. The next three films here, I can go into detail. And this will pretty much finish up all the Vinegar Syndrome stuff that I picked up at CT Horror Fest. I'll start first with the first film I saw out of the three. And it's called De Deadly Daphne's Revenge. From the looks of this cover here and here, this looks like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great, looks like a nice 80s slasher flick. 
Wrong answer. This is not a slasher flick. I'm telling you this right now. If you buy this, don't expect to see a ton of action in this film. Is as this film is mostly played off as a thriller at best. And I'll also show you the reversible cover art, as this is also called the hunting season. Let me just get this down here. But of course, I'm going to go by the original title of this, because let's face it, it's, this was released as Deadly Daphne's Revenge by Trauma. And of course, I love Trauma, so... So that's pretty much the main reason why I picked this up. This film was meh. Had is okay. I went. It's probably the weakest of the five films that I've seen so far out of the collection that I picked up. And it's really a film that you're not gonna expect. Because you're expecting this to be a horror film. This pretty much isn't a horror film. It's more of a thriller. And we... And we rarely... See Daphne in this film. So that's another reason why this film was... Nah. The next film is The House on Tombstone Hill. A.K.A. The Dead Come Home. A.K.A. Its original title when it was released by Troma. You're not, you're not going to guess. You're not going to believe the poster uh, as it does scream early 90s. Dead Dudes in a House. Yes. If that does not scream, if the poster does not scream early 90s, I don't know what it does. And plus the fact that this, you don't see any of these guys, I don't think you see any of these guys in the film. Which is another story. And you think it it's, it's pretty much sucks. But I'm here to tell you, this film is very good. In fact, I think one of my favorite Vinegar Syndrome slash trauma films that I have. This film is sort of a slasher slash zombie film. While it has the little zombie elements, this is more of a slasher, if anything. But the film has good performances. The action is good. Plus, it's very gory. It's all... That you expect in a trauma film. Definitely check this out if you're into trauma. You will not go wrong even though the cover art isn't the greatest in the world. Last film in this trio is Grave Robbers. This film, I have to say, when I was first told about this film... Yeah, I had a little worries, but I decided to pick up anyway. Because maybe I'll, maybe I'll like it. Did I like it? Yes. Would I go as far as to highly recommend it? No, but still, it's a good film. I thought the lead performance was a little over the top. And your main villain felt like he was a Herbert West wannabe. But still... This film worked basically because it's just schlock. It's campy. It doesn't take itself seriously. And it was kind of... And I kind of liked the ending too because it was something I didn't expect. But with this film, it doesn't know what it wants to be. But still, if you're into like campy schlock type films, then Grey Robbers is a film for you. The last three films in this edition are all classic Universal Studio films that I picked up at CT Horror Fest. First is the original Frankenstein starring 
Boris Karloff. This is a very good film. It's definitely one of the classics. As it's pretty much my second favorite Universal monster film. Right behind Dracula. Has a very good performance from Boris Karloff. And Colin Cleave as Henry Frankenstein. This is really a good film that you should check out if you're into classic horror. The next film is The Bride of Frankenstein. This is also a good film. Not in the level of Frankenstein or Dracula, but still definitely worth checking out. It also has good performances from Koloff and, and Colin Cleave in that one as well. Let me just, yep, that's the same actor. <laughs> Double check on that. And finally, the last film is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. I've never seen this film. But I saw they had CT Horror Fist for $10. So I decided why not check it out. I love Psycho. I love his film Vertigo. This is definitely a film I'm going to check out eventually. Once... I have time because I've got tons of other films that I have. Speaking of which, the next edition probably maybe Rock the Rock and Shock edition as so I'll have more Blu-rays from that convention. Then afterwards, you're gonna start seeing a lot, a big episode probably. Because there's a lot of stuff I picked up between like from around, I believe, September until probably November. So you'll probably get at least two months of films that I picked up. I picked up some really good ones recently, but I will share that in a future episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to... Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out Anthony T's Horror Chamber at the horrorchamber.blogspot.com. You can go to Anthony T's Horror Show's official Facebook page to see what guests I have coming up on my show. It's, the address is facebook.com slash Anthony T's Horror Show. With that, have a good day. In support indie horror.